Hi everyone, this is our channel, Around My Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. A love triangle can tear people apart, especially if it involves you, your husband-to-be, and your mother. Yeah, I know. Sad and complicated, isn't it? But let me tell you my story. I am Linda. I am 21 years old. I was a ballerina, and I loved acting on stages and theaters. I enjoyed all kinds of arts. They called me the butterfly because I was always supporting my colleagues and giving them positive energy. I didn't care much about love stories because I felt that none of the boys I'd ever met ever rose to the level of hero in my assessment. That is, until I met Ethan. He was an angel, handsome, educated, and a true artist. He could play music, draw, and direct movies. He was adored by all the girls on our drama team. And when he was assigned to direct our play, I ended up adoring him too. I liked everything about him. His voice, his speech, his manner, his style, and that lovely smile of his. One day, I decided to tell him about my love for him. He was working in the theater and I asked him if he could excuse himself for five minutes so I could speak with him in private. He accepted, and once we were alone, I confessed to him, Ethan, I think I love you. He was mildly surprised and pleased, it seemed, and he asked me to repeat my words again. I did, and he suddenly swept me into his arms and embraced me and said, You are the answer to all my dreams, Linda. I have loved you from the first day I laid eyes on you. We began spending a lot of time together. One day, he told me that he wanted to meet my mother. I asked him why, and he said that by tradition, he needed to get my mother's permission to marry me. I was ecstatic and felt as if I were floating in the air. I rushed home breathless to tell mom, who was not only my mother, but my best friend as well. When she saw me, she said, so, someone wants to marry you, huh? She said. Amazed, I asked her, how did you know? She replied, I can tell by that euphoric look on your face and your rosy cheeks. Then she smiled lovingly. I invited Ethan to come by my home tomorrow at eight o'clock, and I began counting down the hours till his arrival. At eight o'clock sharp, the doorbell rang, and when I opened the door briskly, he was standing there holding a bouquet of flowers. He handed the flowers to me, and I invited him to come in and sit in the sitting room. I went to Mom's room to hurry her up, then I returned to sit with Ethan. Mom appeared at the door saying, Hello, Ethan. Please forgive me for not greeting you at the door. I looked at Ethan. His eyes were transfixed on Mom's face. From that point, he never took his eyes off Mom for the rest of the evening. Even worse than that, whenever he would speak to her, he would just ignore me completely, as if I weren't in the same room as they were. And his looks weren't simply looks of admiration. No, they seemed to be deeper than that. I was both stunned and hurt. I had to struggle to suppress my rolling thoughts. When he finally had to leave and excused himself, he ended up not even saying a word about our marriage. Instead, he just promised Mom that he would visit her again sometime. Ethan is so cute, Mom said after he left. Peeved, I asked, is he just cute or did you like him a lot? I like him a lot because he will be your future husband, she replied, looking at me strangely. I was so jealous of my mom. Do you believe it? I went to my room and found a message from Ethan. I enjoyed my visit immensely. I simply adore your mom. She is so elegant. I stabbed at my phone's touchscreen and messaged back. Well, what about me? Am I elegant too? He replied defensively. Yes, of course, you are always beautiful. That goes without saying. I love you. Ethan spent the next few days constantly talking about my mom. He even asked me for her phone number. The nerve of this guy. I suddenly saw my love life crashing in flames and became so jealous of my mother that I avoid speaking to her altogether. Ethan was now speaking with her more than me. I began to argue with him over silly, trivial things. He asked me what was wrong, but I didn't answer him. I just gave him the cold shoulder treatment. One day, Mom and I were watching a movie at home, and I couldn't help but notice that she was receiving a text message every minute or so. She casually but subtly held her cell phone at just such an angle that I couldn't inadvertently read the text messages from my vantage point. Ooh, how I hated my mother at that moment. Suddenly the doorbell rang. 
she put down her cell phone to go answer the door. In that instant, I snatched it up and began ravenously scanning her message thread. From Ethan, your face is etched in my heart. I immediately took a screenshot and forwarded it to my phone. When mom returned from answering the door, I showed her the message from Ethan that I had read and demanded an explanation. She seemed confused, then enlightened, and said, Oh, okay, I can explain. Just calm down. I shouted angrily, Explain what? That you two are lovers and I am a blind fool? She replied in a sage, calm voice. There is a misunderstanding here, and if you will calm down for just a minute, I can explain everything. Suddenly, I heard Ethan's voice behind me. He proudly held out a necklace to show me. It had Mom's picture in it. I was incensed, outraged. I said, you have the gall to show me this necklace with my mom's picture in it? My God! Confused and taken aback at my sudden outburst of animosity, he cautiously offered in clarification. No, no, she isn't your mom. She's mine. Look again. Stumped, I looked at the photo more closely. He was right. The woman in the necklace wasn't mom. When I first looked at her, I mistook her for mom. The resemblance was uncanny. He explained gently, When I first met your mom, I was overjoyed. I felt that destiny had granted me not only a new wife, but a second mother as well. When I called your mom the first time, I told her that she looked just like my mother, and I asked her to please consider me as her son, too. I was shocked, speechless. Mom and Ethan were both crying tears of joy. I am so sorry for my jealous behavior. Please forgive me for my stupidity, I said in a deeply apologetic voice. Today is my wedding day, and I'm very pleased and proud to tell all my readers out there that my mom loves my husband and he her. And isn't that just the sweetest thing? In legends and horror stories, ghosts are typically spirits of the dead, those who suffered greatly in their lives, that when their time comes, they choose to linger in this world to sow hatred and chaos among the living. Do you believe this, that there are vengeful spirits living among us, right here, right now? I do, and my story will tell you why. I'm Martha, I'm 19 years old, and I have a twin sister, Caroline. She wasn't just my sister, but we were best friends and subsequent partners in crime. We suffered a miserable life because we lived in poverty. Our parents were very poor, despite belonging to a rich family. Grandpa, on my dad's side of the family, worked in the petroleum industry, where he made lots of investments and projects. And fortunately, he had a lot of enemies too, many of whom were from mom's side of the family. Dad was the middle son, but he assumed responsibility for grandpa's work because he was very competent and capable. Similarly, mom became responsible for her father's work. She did her best to avoid conflict between her side of the family and dad's side so that they could work together peacefully. It was at this point, I believe, that vengeful spirits must have come into play. My parents had loved each other since their childhood, but they didn't tell their families about it. In the past, both my grandpas were once friends and partners. They worked together within the same company, but they later became enemies and split the company into two. Both families hated each other that day forth, all of them, except for my parents. Mom's uncles took over her company and fired her. Dad couldn't bear to see mom in this situation, so he told his dad that he was going to marry her. So his father made him choose between my mother and the company with all the power and wealth that came with it. To grandpa's chagrin, dad chose mom over everything else. And so, they got married and lived together with grandma. They faced life's problems without any support from anyone. Grandpa felt betrayed by dad and disowned him. Then, Carolyn and I were born. Dad did his best to make us happy and give us everything we needed. Grandma told us about our family's history and how both our parents had been cut off from their families out of sheer greed and betrayal. It felt a bit unfair, but this was our life now. Then, one day, we heard Dad speaking on the phone with Mom standing beside him and they were both acting very nervous. He told her to take care of us and then he left the house and never came back. Mom never told us where he went or why he left. Sometime after that, Grandma passed away. Our situation was getting worse. We thought we had to do something to help Mom. Maybe we were being influenced by those vengeful spirits I mentioned. But either way, Carolyn and I made our decision 
to go over to the dark side. We decided to steal, rob, defraud. We were smart enough. Together, we could definitely pull it off. We began with our neighbor, very wealthy, but very cheap. We figured she must be keeping her money somewhere in the house, since she didn't believe in leaving a dime in the bank's care and was completely convinced that they would steal her money. Lucky for us, I guess. And we were right. We infiltrated her house when she was away and found a load of money stashed away under a loose tile on the floor. Took some time to find, but we got it. When we got home, the house was completely deserted. Mom wasn't there. Her clothes were all gone from the wardrobe. We were on our own now. We began exploiting jewelry shop owners. We would pretend to be a wealthy customer and tell the owner that we wanted to take the jewelry home to show our mom and get her opinion. We would drug hotel owners and put all the money in their safe into a bag, then scream and call for help, saying that the owner had just collapsed, creating a diversion and disappearing in the crowd. We were getting quite good at it. Our wealth slowly grew day by day. Mom called every now and then to check that we were fine on our own. Of course, she knew nothing about our work or what we were doing to survive. Our ultimate goal was to earn a lot of money and run away to another country to start a new life. One evening, I was with my friends and I met a guy named Craig. He was rich, but somehow seemed different than all the people we robbed. Later I found out, to my surprise, that he was our cousin, the grandson of the man that had taken everything away from my mother and fired her. Unsure of what to do, I told Carolyn what I knew. She went ecstatic. She told me that this was our chance to take back everything, the company, the money that belonged to us. But for the first time, we didn't quite agree. Craig was nothing like his father. He wasn't greedy. He was kind and gentle. He often told me that money was a curse if it meant living alone away from people that we care about and cherish. I made up my mind, and I told Carolyn that I couldn't be a part of our evil scheming anymore, and I wanted out, and so I left her and went to live on my own. At this point, I had no idea what Carolyn was up to. In the meantime, Craig was negotiating a deal that would earn his company a lot of profit. He told me to come visit at the company, and then we would go out for dinner. I accepted happily. When I arrived at his company, I sensed someone behind me. Then, suddenly a hand pressed a handkerchief over my mouth, and I passed out. When I woke up, I found Craig unconscious beside me. To the side, I could see his safe was wide open. Papers were scattered everywhere, and in my hand was the key to the safe. Then the police arrived, found the safe key in my hand, and accused me of being a thief. I told them that I had been drugged unconscious, just like Craig. The police officer looked inside my bag and found a bottle of chloroform. I was shocked, to say the least. I couldn't understand what had happened. They took me downstairs and tried to wake up Craig. At about that time, a woman in a black wig came over to me and said, Martha, you betrayed me. It was Carolyn. I couldn't believe that she framed me. Then she left. Her betrayal hurt me deeply. A part of my brain told me that I had betrayed her first, but that doesn't matter now. When I get out of prison, someday, I resolve to get my revenge on her. We were no longer sisters. Just as we had been betrayed by our families before us, we were now locked into yet another circle of family betrayal. Only it was more personal and closer to home this time. Were they truly vengeful spirits influencing us? I think so. What about you?